Okay, we're going to look at 5.3. It's called Proving Triangle Congruence by SAS. So uh, just to review congruent polygons, that means that all the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Also, all corresponding sides are going to be congruent. In other words, congruent polygons are going to be the same size and the same shape. Okay, um, so you can always find all of the sides and all of the corresponding angles congruent to show that polygons are congruent. But with triangles, there are shortcuts. Okay, so in certain situations, triangles can be proved congruent even when all of the corresponding parts aren't known to be congruent. So this is the first of those shortcuts. It's called uh, SAS for short, SAS triangle congruency. Um, the S and the A's, the S's and the A's stand for side angle side. Okay, and so here's how this is going to work. Um, notice the A is in between the two S's and the angle is in between the two sides in the name of it. And that's important because this is going to be the included side. And I'll try to describe what I mean by that in this picture here. So um, in this first triangle, let's say that I knew that AB is congruent to CD. Okay, so I'll mark those congruent. Okay, and then let's say that I also know that um, that BC and EF are congruent. Okay, I'll mark those two congruent. Well, now I've got two sets of two pairs of sides congruent in these two triangles. Okay, um, if I want to use the side angle side shortcut, I need um, two sides in the included angle. So when I'm looking at the, the angle that those two lines that I uh, marked, those segments that I marked, the angle they form is up at the top. That would be angle B up here. Okay, so if I've got that these included angles are also congruent, then um, I know I'm going to have congruent triangles. And I'll, I'll try to describe why that works. So let's say that this represents, these pens actually represent those uh, line segments. Well, if I keep this angle the same at the top, there's really one, only one way that I can close this triangle, right? And so, you know, if I, I could have a different triangle, it might be turned or something, but if I have segments that are the same length and I have the same angle between them, again, there's only gonna be one way that I can close that triangle and it's gonna have to form the same triangle uh, or, or a congruent triangle, no matter which way. It, it might be turned or rotated, reflected or something like that, um, but it's going uh, to be the same size and shape. Okay, so I should have a comma in here. Um, if, well, no, I do have a comma right there. So if you've got two pairs of sides and an included angle, that means the whole triangles are congruent, okay? Um, another concept that's really important, sometimes we're gonna be looking at two triangles and it doesn't seem like we have enough information, but sometimes there's some hidden um, sides or angles that you can find congruent. So this example says, in each pair of triangles, can you conclude that any sides or angles are congruent? And looking in this first pair, I've got two triangles that are stuck together. This line segment is in both triangles. So it's the same, BD is, you know, the, the right side of that left triangle, but it's the left side of the right triangle. So I can say that this is congruent to itself. So I'm, I like to put little dashes like that. That's congruent to itself. That's called the, um, so my answer here is yes, BD is going to be congruent to segment BD. Um, and anytime something is congruent to itself, that's, that's called the reflexive property of congruence. Okay, I'm just gonna write it like that for short, but reflexive property of congruence is what I used here, okay? This I call the bow tie situation. When you've got a bow tie like this, two uh, triangles that kind of form uh, what looks like a bow tie or an hourglass if you put it on the side. Well, um, but we've got two intersecting lines there and then um, the angles across from each other in intersecting lines are always going to be congruent. Those are called vertical angles. And those two angles are in the two triangles, so even though it wasn't initially marked that those are congruent, I know that uh, those two angles are congruent. That's called the vertical angles theorem, okay? So I don't wanna just call those angle B because there's a bunch of different angle Bs in this um, picture. So I'll use three letters. I'll call this uh, one on the left ABD, so angle ABD. Remember, you always put the uh, vertex in the center when you name it with three letters. 
And then over here, I'll call this CBE, angle CBE. So that's the vertical angles theorem. Okay. And lastly, um, yeah, I've got the vertical angles again. Okay, so because so, it's another bow tie situation. Okay, so I'm not going to write that down again, but I got that just like I do from the last pro the last uh, example. But I've also got these um, these parallel lines. So if you think back to uh, I believe it was chapter three, we can there's lots of things we can do with parallel lines and a transversal. Okay. So if you imagine that this is, uh, these are, I'll, I like to call them train tracks, and then I've got a transversal. I've actually got two transversals to choose from, right? You can choose either one. Let's say I use this one. Well, then if I look at this angle and this angle, then those are going to be congruent because they those are called alternate interior angles, right? They're on the inside of the tracks. On different sides of the transversal, that means alternate sides, so alternate interior angles. So I can say it's okay to call this angle A because there's really only one angle A in this picture. Angle A is going to be congruent to angle E, okay? I could also use the other transversal. If I use this as my transversal, well, then these two angles would be congruent also by alternate interior angle. So I'll also say that angle C is gonna be congruent to angle D um, by alternate interior angle. Those are both pairs of alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles theorem. I'm abbreviating there, alternate interior angles theorem. Okay. Okay, so often you need to use those to find some missing pieces. All right, so let's um, try out um, the SAS triangle congruency theorem. Um, you should really, when you're using this theorem, when you, you should really put the congruence um, symbol after it because um, later on we'll have some similarity theorems. I didn't mean to underline that uh, congruence symbol. I'll fix that in the note-taking guide. That's a, just a typo there. Okay, but the question here, are the following pairs of triangles congruent by SAS? If so, identify any postulates or theorems you may have used. So, you know, if I'm using um, reflexive or vertical angles or alternate tiers, I wanna put that in my answer as well, okay? So looking at this first example, hey, I've got in these triangles, I've got two pairs of sides that are congruent and one pair of angles. So I'm thinking, hey, this could work with SAS. And, but I need to make sure that my two sides that are marked um, form the, that this is an included angle. So it does form that angle in both of these triangles. So this works by SAS. I don't need to find any other missing pieces there. So when it's a yes, I'll just put the theorem. Okay, so that one's, if it's a no, I'll write no. But um, anything where I uh, just write the theorems, that means that's going to be a, a yes. Ah, well, I'll put a yes in there. Okay, that answers yes. All right, so next up, I do have two sides and an angle here, but if you look at this one, the sides I have, well, that's going to form this angle. That would be the included angle, right? And same kind of thing over here. My included angle would be right there, and that's not the one that I have congruent. This is not SAS. It, it, where I put the two dots, if those were congruent, then I'd have SAS, but that's not what I have here, so my answer is going to be no. Okay, next up, well here I've got two angles and a side, and it turns out later on there's a way that we can get these congruent, but not by SAS, this is not SAS, we got two angles and a side, not two sides and an angle like we did on this one, so this is one's going to be a no again. Okay, and, and none of these are uh, these situations where I can find extra things. You're either going to need two triangles that are glued together or the bow tie situation to get missing pieces. Okay, so let's move on. Try some more. Hey, I've got two angles and a side. Well, this side's included between the two angles, but it's still two angles and a side, not two sides and an angle. So I can't use SAS here, okay? Um, and it turns out this one, later on, we can do it with a different shortcut, but not with SAS. Okay, this one, it, at first glance, we only have two sides, so it might seem like it's a no, but wait a second, we got our bow tie situation, so that means we can get this by, um, that would be the vertical angles theorem that allows me to do that.
okay? And then I do have two sides and an included angle. This is the angle formed by the two congruent sides in both triangles, right? So I'm gonna use SAS there, and so this is a yes, okay? Um, now, in this one, it doesn't say that the right angles are congruent, but they are. All right angles are congruent. That, that's the right angles congruence theorem. Some teachers will want you to um, list that, hey, these are congruent because all right angles are congruent, right angles congruence theorem, and some teachers won't. So it just depends on your teacher, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and put that in. So I'm gonna use the right angles congruence theorem I'm abbreviating here to say that those are congruent. And now I do have two sides and an included angle in both those triangles. So I can use SAS. This is going to be a yes. Okay. All right. Both of these last examples, I have two triangles that are glued together. That means there's going to be a shared side in both of these. So I know that this is going to be congruent to itself. I put two ticks in both of those because that's a pair and those are a pair, right? And I'll do the same thing over here. I just need one tick on both of those because I haven't used one tick for a pair of sides there, okay? So now looking at these, hey, a two sides and an angle, and I'm just thinking, is that angle included? Yes, it is. It's in between those two sides, so this is gonna be a yes. So I used, um, that's the reflexive property that allowed me to say this pink piece is congruent to itself. Reflexive property of congruence. I'm just going to do that for short, okay? And then I used SAS. Okay, last one. Let's see. Now I have two angles and a side. That wouldn't be SAS, right? SAS is two sides and an angle, so this is kind of the reverse of that. So later on we can get this congruent, but right now we can't do it with just SAS. Okay. Okay, and so let's try doing some two-column proofs with what we know. I've got two different two-column proofs here, okay? So left column is going to be my statements, and the right, um, I'm going to justify my statements with the reasons column there, okay? All right, so in this first uh, problem, I've got my given information up here. Um, before I even think through these problems, I just like to copy my given info right into statement A. So that, that says GH is going to be congruent to FE. Those two segments are congruent. And then angle GHF is congruent to angle EFH. Okay? And I believe that's already what's in the picture. But before I even look at the picture, I'm just going to write, hey, my reason for that, that's just given info. So that's always how these are going to start. You're just going to copy the um, given info and then put given. I might as well do this one while I'm at it. So RV and US bisect each other. And that is given info. Okay, so give. Okay. So moving back to this one, I'll work all the way through this one now. So let's make sure that this is what's in the picture. Sometimes that given info will already be in the diagram and sometimes it won't. So it says GH is, is um, congruent to FE. Well, that's the top and bottom in this picture. So, hey, that's already marked. Okay, that's good. And it says angle GHF. GHF, that would be this angle down here. That's that one with that little swoosh. That is congruent to EFH, which is the one with the other swoosh. So Okay, they're telling us that those are congruent. I like to put little ticks in like that, but the book often just puts the swoosh. Okay, so this is what I've got. What I'm trying to show is that the two triangles are congruent. So it's very similar to the problems we were doing on the previous page. It's just we weren't doing, writing down all our uh, reasons, uh, statements and reasons in a two column proof. But if you're looking at this thinking, are these congruent? Well, hey, this is the section on SAS, so we're probably gonna use SAS, right? So we don't have enough right now. We have one pair of sides, one pair of angles, but let's think about if we can find something else. And we can here because these two triangles are glued together. So we can use the reflexive property, right, to say that that is gonna be congruent to itself. Anytime something is congruent to itself, that's gonna be the reflexive property of congruence. So I'm gonna put that in my proof. I'm gonna say, Segment FH is congruent to itself by the reflexive property of congruence. 
I'm just going to write reflexive and then a congruent symbol for short. Okay. All right, and now looking at those, I'm thinking, are those congruent now? Well, yeah, now you can use SAS, right? I've got two sides and an included angle in both triangles. Two sides and an included angle. So now I can say, I can finish my proof. We always finish our proof with what we're trying to prove. So I'm going to copy that statement exactly. So that's always going to be the last statement. So even if you really don't know what goes in the middle, the middle is the hardest part. You know what's going to go at the beginning, it's the given info, and your last statement is going to be what you're trying to prove. So triangle GHF is congruent to triangle EFH. And that, um, my reason for that, I just used the SAS triangle congruency theorem. Okay. All right, let's try this next one. This next one's a little trickier. Um, okay, because it's harder to deal with the, um, the given info here. So let's think about this. This says that RV, RV is this segment, and US, here's US, it says that those bisect each other. Okay, that means that they cut each other in half, right? So in the diagram, we don't have any sides or angles to begin with. We've got to find all of them. But they're always going to, um, it, it, they might tell us sometimes on this one they gave us some congruent pieces. If they don't give us congruent pieces, they'll give us a way to find some congruent pieces. So let's think what we can do with that fact that they bisect each other. So bisect means they cut each other in half. So the green line is going to cut the pink line in half, and then the pink line cuts the green line in half. Okay, often I see people put all four of those um, segments congruent to each other, but the two pink ones are congruent, the two green ones are congruent. It's not that they're all necessarily, all four of them are congruent to each other. We don't know that, okay? But the reason I could say that is because I know what the word bisect means. So um, let's see, I'll call this, for my two pink pieces, I'll call RQ and QV. So I'll say RQ is going to be congruent to QV. Okay, and, for, and I'll put these in the same statement, and then I'll say SQ is congruent to QU. Okay, and my reason for that is the definition of bisect. Bisect means cut each other in half, so cut each other into congruent parts. By the way, it's very helpful if you uh, label your steps and um, statements and reasons. Sometimes like the statements get long or the reasons get long, and if you write A, B, C as you go, it's really helpful to whoever is reading your proofs, or if you're going back and reading them yourself and trying to figure out what you were thinking. Okay. So now I've got two sets of sides. I still don't have enough, but hey, I got my bow tie situation, and that means we've got these two angles are going to be congruent by vertical angles, okay? So don't call them angle Q. Let's use three letters. There's too many angle Qs in this diagram, but I can call this left uh, angle here SQR. I want to put, um, want to put the uh, vertex in the middle when I use three letters. So SQR, angle SQR is going to be congruent to angle VQU. Okay, and that was the vertical angles theorem. These proofs are tough when you are, uh, for a lot of people when you, they start them, but you start to see the same kind of things over and over again in these proofs. So the more practice you get, the easier they get. There's not really that many different situations that they can show us when we're dealing with two triangles that we're trying to get congruent. Okay, and now we're ready to get these triangles congruent, right? They're going to be congruent by SAS. I have two sides and an included angle in both those, so I'm going to use this as my last statement down here. Triangle SQR is congruent to triangle VQU, and that's going to be the SAS triangle congruency theorem. Okay, and that's it for today, and I'll see you next time.